This is the new Tissot PRX Digital, coming in at 40 millimeters. You have an option of a stainless steel case, 316L stainless steel case, and also a 316L stainless steel PVD coated gold looking watch. This model is also available in 35 millimeters, but for the purposes of this video, we have the 40 millimeter variants. In this video, we're going to be going over everything that you need to know about the PRX Digital. Welcome back to Time in the Wrist at Chisholm Hunter. My name is Harrison, as always, and we have two new exciting releases today. We have the Tissot PRX Digital in PVD gold, or PVD coated steel, pretty much, and also the stainless steel variant. So let's start, as we always do, with the specs. Both of these models in the Chisholm Hunter watch box come in at 40 millimeters, but although they come in at the same measurement as the classic Tissot PRX Paramatic 80 that we know and love, and I actually own, they do look a lot chunkier on the wrist. They look a lot bigger, a lot bulkier, and I would bear that in mind because these, to me, are just a little bit too chunky. With that said, you do have a 35mm option. Now, according to our digital calipers that we have here, our trusty digital calipers, this model comes in at about 10.9 mil in thickness. So it is quite thin, but to be honest, for a digital watch, I would have expected it to be that little bit thinner. With that said, I know why they've done this. They want to keep the same style and aesthetic as that Tissot PRX. This model comes in at 39.5 millimeters in length and the glass used on the surface of both of these models or all of these models is sapphire crystal glass, which of course is that little bit harder and that little bit more durable than normal glass. Now we get onto the general aesthetic of this watch, as well as picking up on some comments that I have about the general wearability of this watch. I did manage to get this on the wrist. I did manage to walk around the arcade in Glasgow for a bit, and I have some opinions on it. Let's start with the bracelet. So in terms of the 70s inspired integrated bracelet with a butterfly clasp at the bottom, this is as good quality as the PRX Paramatic 80. It literally is the same bracelet. And I love that because you're paying pretty much half the price as the Paramatic 80 variant for the digital and you still get that same quality in the bracelet. It also has a quick release functionality just inside here, which you can press down and then just pull out. A little example of how you do that is you push down on those little little levers and then you pull it out just like that. It's really, really simple. With that said, I'm unsure of how simple it will be in the 35 mil variant because the 40 mil is obviously that little bit bigger and that little bit easier to get your fingers into. If you look on the case of this watch, you'll have a combination of polished and brushed steel or polished and brushed PVD, depending on which one you're looking at. And the polished kind of accentuates those lines and makes it look a lot more future futuristic than it normally would without those lines. It just gives it a kind of more stylized element to it. Now, if you look around the bezel, that circle, obviously, which is the minim sort of minimalistic bezel, that is in polished, but also the pushers at the right and left hand side are in polished as well as just along the lugs up the side of the face, just there. It looks pretty damn cool. The weight of this model being a digital model is that little bit smaller than automatic models. So this comes in, that's interesting. It comes in at 134 grams, which is actually, if I'm not mistaken, heavier than the other. No, that can't be right. Okay, so it turns out it is slightly lighter than the PRX Paramatic 80 40 millimeters, but only by about six grams, which is quite unusual for a quartz watch. Before we go any further, it's time for the Chisholm Hunter tradition. I can never say that word, tradition, which of course is the wrist check. What are you wearing today on your wrist? Please let me know in the comments. I currently have a Tudor Black Bay ETA Smiley Edition, which is an interesting choice because it is quite a vintage watch. But let me know what you think in the comments. Let me know what you have on. I love having that little watch nerdy chat. This model has pushers at the three o'clock, the kind of five, half five-ish mark, and also around about the nine or the 10 mark, the same kind of area that the Amiga Seamaster has a helium escape valve. Now these pushers obviously control the actual screen of this watch. I'm unsure about digital watches, and the reason I'm unsure about digital watches without going on a rant is that I try and steer clear of screens as much as possible. My job involves videography, photography, editing, filming, YouTube. So when I have my time off, I don't want to be connected to another screen. 
And that's why I kind of just steer clear of the digital watches. Now, I know that there is a market for them and I know that people really like them and not everyone has the same job as me, but from my personal perspective, I just prefer the raw realness of automatic or manual movements. The pushers at the left and right hand side also give this watch quite incredible functionality. Now, there's tons of stuff to play with, so I won't go into the detail because it's just kind of a basic hands-on review, but have a listen to this. It's quite, quite a nice little beep. And one of my favorite little details about this watch has to be the light that comes on on the left hand side if you push that left pusher. Can you zoom in on this, Drew? Right, take a look at this, guys. You see that? How cool is that? It's one of the brightest digital watches in terms of light that I've ever seen. I'm not even kidding. It puts my Casio to shame. <laughs> Moving on to the face of this watch, and that's where there's kind of a double-edged sword. It looks cool as anything. It is an epically reflective, epically eye-catching watch. And I truly, truly like it. I'm not just saying that, I really, really do. However, then you get to the kind of upkeep side of things. And that's where I feel that there's kind of a divide. So it has this super reflective, almost mirrored dial with that kind of uh, rectangle in the middle with, of course, the time. It has the Tissot logo at where the 12 o'clock mark normally is. And then it also has the PRX logo just above where the six o'clock mark would be. Everything on the dial is really symmetrical. It's really nice and it draws the eye into the center. I love that. And I do love how reflective it is. That mirrored approach isn't something you see every day. It is quite rare. It's not something that you'll see on the street on your average Joe's watch. With that said, when I did have my time with it outside within the Chisholm Hunter store in the arcade, when there was a fingerprint caught on that mirror, well, imagine a mirror at home and getting fingerprints on it. It's the only thing you can see. So it would require cleaning and uptake. And if you are kind of like me and you have a bit of ADHD and you kind of hyper-focus on certain things, everything needs to be clean, everything needs to be spec, everything needs to be spam. And that's where I feel that there's this kind of divide between coolness, but also upkeep. And that could really be the only snag that I would hit with this watch. It does show those fingerprints a little bit more easily, just like a mirror does. With that said, part and parcel of wearing watches is getting them dirty, getting them scratched. So I might just be being pernickety. If you are a little bit more sensitive to fingerprints and, and, and getting that those scratches on that watch, I would go for the gold variant. When I tried both of these variants on, the steel definitely showed a lot more of those fingerprints and general marks than the gold did. And that's just because the gold is that little bit more dark than the steel. Before we move on to the movement, remember that these are officially in on Chisholm Hunter's website. Head to chismhunter.co.uk if you want to get these now. If you don't, then fair enough. You can still go on to Chisholm Hunter's website. Have a browse of their amazing watches. I mean, there's Amiga. Shooter, Vacheron, Constantin, Breggy. I mean, the list could go on and on and on. The movement in this watch is, of course, a quartz movement. It is the Caliber 13, and it comes in at 29.47 millimeters in diameter. The battery type that it uses is the Maxell CR2025. Digital watches have a lot of a lot of pros to them. Technically speaking, they are more accurate than automatic watches. They are cheaper than automatic watches. They are normally slimmer than automatic watches, but I don't think anything will ever replace the raw ruggedness of an automatic watch, the handcrafted finish of that automatic watch, the beating heart of a, of a true timekeeping instrument. I'm not bashing these watches at all. I actually really, really like the style of them, but on this channel, I'm never going to lie to you. That's something that I will just never do. They're not for me but they could be for you. Thank you guys so much for watching this Chisholm Hunter episode. My name is Harrison, as always. If you enjoyed, please consider hitting that subscribe button and I'll see you next time.